First of all, a very warm welcome to all of you to my presentation about the DGNB system and the European approach on uh, sustainable buildings and cities. I really appreciate that uh, uh, so many of you have uh, turned up. Uh, it's really great because it's already very late. And uh, actually, we have quite a uh, program in front of us. But before I start uh, with my presentation, I would like to shortly introduce myself. My name is Robert Himmler. I'm a mechanical engineer from Germany, but I live here in Thailand since 2013. Um, I have started a consultant uh, company for energy efficient and sustainable buildings called EGS Plan. And uh, however, today I'm uh, presenting on behalf of the DGNB, the German Sustainable Building uh, Council, uh, because we are um, uh, consulting uh, uh, building projects and we are certifying building projects according to the DGNB system uh, here in Thailand and in Southeast Asia. Um, yeah. As we all know, know, in 2015, there has been the United Nations Climate Change Conference and uh, there has been the, the Paris Agreement to limit uh, global warming to two degrees uh, until the year 2100. We know that already some uh, uh, countries have stepped back from the agreement, but I think sooner or later everybody will uh, agree to, the, to this uh, uh, plan uh, because... Uh, global warming is actually happening and uh, uh, we already feel the the influence of that. Um, what you see here is the a global uh, CO2 budget. Um, if we want to limit um, the temperature, increase of temperature in the atmosphere by 2 degrees centigrade, um, we can only uh, emit uh, 687 gigatons of C CO2 until the year 2100 and if we keep up the same uh, emission rate as we have at the moment this uh, budget will be used up in 17 years and then the the increase of temperature in the, in the atmosphere will be even higher so i think it's quite obvious we have to reduce that and the big question is how can we as building specialists as architects and engineers and construction companies how can we help uh, to uh, tackle this um, problem and I think we have quite an influence because a total of 40% of the worldwide energy demand is uh, contributed by buildings, 30% of the worldwide CO2 emissions and 30% of the worldwide resource consumption is um, uh, caused by buildings. And um, this might be very these might be very abstract uh, numbers, but actually, uh, especially here in Thailand with its long coastline and here in Bangkok in particular, we can already feel the influence of uh, global warming because uh, Bangkok is one of the three cities uh, in the world which are sinking faster than the sea level is rising. So. The problem here in Bangkok is even more severe and we can see that uh, there has been a big flood in 2011 and this might ha happen even more often in future. Now, another challenge when it comes to uh, buildings is the built environment. and. Uh, um, so we have uh, problems with uh, noise emissions from air conditioning. We have uh, questions about uh, air quality uh, in a room like this. Uh, this is actually quite typical. We have problems with thermal comfort. I'm wearing a jacket, but still I freeze. Um, this is an example from an energy audit that we carried out in, uh, in a building. Uh, the outlet air temperatures um, of, of the air, condi air conditioning system is 10 to 12 degrees centigrade. This causes a lot of draft 
uh, people feel uncomfortable when they start to close um, the air outlet and still people are getting sick. Um, I have moved my, my office uh, to, um, let's say, a relatively good, good building where we can also influence the temperature, but I would say still about 20% of the workplaces we cannot use in our office. People have to sit at the conference table because at their workplace there's too much draft. So this is also, it's not only a question of, of well-being, it's all, also a question of, of uh, costs, if I can only use 80% of my office space. And um, yeah, a lot of uh, developer, they always uh, think about the development costs of a project and the construction cost, which sum up to 22% uh, of the total uh, building cost. But uh, of course, later on, uh, there are more uh, operation related uh, costs like energy costs and maintenance costs, and they sum up to 76%. So what we need now is a life cycle cost approach. We should not only focus uh, at the beginning of a project, the first year of the project, uh, but we should focus what are the total costs of a building after 50 years. So what you see here is the accumulated net present value uh, of a building, including operation costs, maintenance, uh, replacement. And you can see that uh, the, the costs, the, the operation and maintenance costs are actually higher than the uh, investment costs and, at the beginning. And all these challenges uh, led to the foundation of the DGNB, uh, the German Sustainable Building uh, Council. Um, and the DGNB is an uh, NGO, a non-profit organization. Um, it's an independent community of experts and a, a total of 500 volunteers work together. They come from all kinds of, uh, they are specialists in different uh, uh, fields of architecture, engineering, like building physicists, um, urban planners, etc., etc., and they help uh, to develop the DGNB itself and the DGNB certification uh, system. Now, the main goals of the DGNB is sensitizing the general public in regard to sustainable buildings, um, to, um, to provide the DGNB certification system, to, to translate sustainability into the building practice, and um, to pooling and sharing uh, knowledge. Um, the DGNB has a total of 1,200 uh, members. Uh, these are, can be single people like architects, engineers, consultants, but also uh, big companies are, are members of the DGNB and some are even known here in uh, Thailand, like for example, uh, Stiebel, Elton, uh, Schuko. Then there we have some municipalities like the city of Munich, Frankfurt, uh, Daimler, uh, Volkswagen, uh, Porsche. They are all members of the DGNB. Okay, um, I would like to talk now about the DGNB uh, system. Um, the DGNB system is a building certification system which focuses not only on green buildings but on sustainable buildings. And um, the DGNB was, is actually a very young system in comparison to LEED. Um, so the advantage that the DGNB had uh, was that they could do a, a fresh start and they have a very systematic approach when it comes to sus sustainability of buildings. And what they did is they took the Brundtland report on sustainability from the year 1987 and the definition of sustainability in the Brundtland report is that there are three main pillars of sustainability and these are economic growth, environmental protection and social equality. And uh, this approach was translated into the DGNB system. You can find these three main pillars of sustainability uh, also in the system. We have here environmental, economic and social, cultural and functional quality. And then we have three additional uh, qualities, technical quality, process quality, and site quality, which are influencing the three uh, main pillars. And the basic idea here is that um, if you have a building project, and for, for example, if you want to certify it according to LEED, you can put a lot of money into fancy technology to improve the environmental quality um, of the building, but 
uh, and you can get a, a very high ranking. In DGNB, this is not possible because if this uh, environmental technology is not really cost efficient, you will lose uh, points when it comes to the economi economic quality of the building. So you must find a very good balance between economy, equality, and social, function, social cultural, and functional uh, quality. Behind these main topics, uh, there is a set of 37 uh, criteria. I don't want to go into each and every criterion. I just want to pick out uh, the most remarkable uh, criteria in comparison to other certification systems. And the first one is... Um, the building life cycle assessment, while other certification systems, they are evaluating only the energy consumption of the building or probably they check uh, how much recycled material you are using in a building project or um, they measure the distance or the transportation distance of the material. The DGNB has a much more systematic and scientific approach because you have to make a full life cycle assessment of your building, which means you have to evaluate the energy consumption but also the material, the impact of the, of the materials that you are using on the environment. And for this, uh, DGMB is providing um, a building material uh, database to make, to make it more easy. Also, when it comes to um, economic criteria like the life cycle cost, DGMB requires a full life cycle cost calculation of the building. So you have to consider not only the energy costs, but also the water costs, the cleaning costs, and the construction cost, and you have to calculate these costs uh, according to the net present value over uh, the whole lifetime of the building. Uh, another uh, criteria is design for all, uh, which means the, the, the building has to be fully handicapped uh, accessible. This is a prerequisite in DGNB that everybody can uh, enter the building, also handicapped uh, buildings, uh, handicapped people. Ease of cleaning of the building uh, is an important uh, issue. Architects tend to design fancy bu uh, buildings, but they might not think about how to actually clean the building. So either the building will be dirty or it's very expensive to clean it. Urban planning and uh, design procedure. DGNB also tries to evaluate the um, aesthetics of the building. Now, the architecture of the building is something very subjective, and uh, DGNB tries to find objective criteria to evaluate the looks of a building. So, for example, you are getting points if uh, there is an architectural competition, or you're getting points if the architect is developing different uh, architectural solutions for the building. Uh, so DGNB tries to objectify subjective criteria to evaluate the look of the building. Uh, when it comes to the uh, site quality, uh, DGNB um, is uh, rating the, the site uh, in terms of uh, local environment, transport access, infrastructure, and access to an amenities. Um, but this evaluation is only for the information of the, of the client and it will not influence the rating of the building. Um, so the question is, why is that? And it's very simple. As building designers, as architects and engineers, we usually we cannot select the land plot. So, and we cannot influence the land plot, so why would I evaluate it when it comes to the sustainability of the building? So DGNB is skipping this uh, part. Yeah, what, are, what is the DNA, what are the, the core values of, of the DGNB? It's the life cycle assessment uh, that I already uh, mentioned. Um, maybe on top of that, I would like to mention that you, uh, the building will also evaluate it in terms of how easy it is to demel De uh, demolish it. Um, you have to actually write a handbook for the person who is demol demolishing the building maybe in 50 years to explain how easy it is and also how, how to recycle ma the material and actually what materials are in the building, were in the building used. So it's like a, a handbook. <clears throat> then it's holistic. I already mentioned it. We have the three main pillars, environmental, economical and social cultural qualities. And DGNB is emphasizing on the performance of, of the building. So the other uh, certification systems, they are like tick lists. So, okay, you have a double glazing, you have a photovoltaic system. So this will give you points. DGNB uh, wants to improve the, um, the, the, the performance of the building, but DGNB doesn't tell you what to do. 
So uh, there are different ways how to save energy, for example, in a building. And uh, you have the freedom to choose the best way for you and, and for your client. DGNB is more than one uh, system. Uh, each building uh, type has different uh, requirements. So we have many, many different uh, uh, certification systems. But the good thing is they are very similar. Um, we have existing buildings, new construction, interiors, and complete city uh, districts. Today, I will focus on, uh, on building projects, new, new construction buildings, and uh, city districts. Now, the big question is, how do we implement the DGNB system in, in a building project? Um, so the main uh, people in the certification process is the building owner, DGNB, and the DGNB auditor. Um, basically, the, the client is contracting DGNB and the DGNB auditor. Um, the DGNB is located in Stuttgart, uh, and, uh, but DGNB is not doing the certification uh, all the documentation work, this is done by the DGNB auditor, who is usually locally in the respective uh, country, so DGNB doesn't have to travel around in the world to save costs. And DGNB provides a license to the DGNB auditor, you have to take an examination and go to a training. And oops, uh, the DGNB communicates with the design team to give the environmental requirements to the design team to help them to fulfill the DGNB requirements and the design team will provide the documentation to the DGNB auditor and the DGNB auditor is um, yeah, uh, redesigning the documentation so that it fits with the DGNB uh, requirements and DGNB is at the end of the project uh, is evaluating um, uh, the building, um, the, the points are counted together and then there will be a final rating which can be silver, gold or platinum. Uh, bronze is only for existing buildings. Now this uh, certification system is a young certification system as I already mentioned but um, it's also um, very successful. We can see that the certification system was applied the first time in 2009. Uh, and now in 2018, uh, we have more than 4,800 projects um, certified so far. And in Germany, DGNB is a uh, market leader with 84% of all uh, certified buildings. And another uh, special thing with the DGNB system is that it's internationally adaptable. Um, each country has its special climate and its special um, um, requirements in terms of uh, construction culture and uh, in ge general economy. Uh, so the DGNB system can be adapted uh, to, to different countries and this is quite easy because you can adjust these uh, values, weighting factors, benchmarks, limit values, uh, so you can apply the DGNB system worldwide. Okay. Enough of the theory, I would like to introduce now uh, four uh, DGNB projects that we have applied, uh, implemented here in Thailand. And the first one is the Hefele Design Center. Um, it's quite interesting, Hefele is very famous in, in uh, Thailand, but I think in, in Germany, do you know Hefele? Yeah? Okay, okay. Okay, because I think in Germany they are not uh, selling to the end consumer, while in in Thailand they have a very uh, they have a much bigger product range and they are directly selling to the so they they are really super famous in Thailand. But Germany, I, I've never heard before. <laughs> anyway, um, they have erected in 1994 a design center in Phuket, <coughs> and um, the project was already built and in operation when we did the certification. And this is only possible once in each country uh, because this is a like a pilot certification where you can try out the certification system and you can actually adapt the system to the country. So this is like the adaption project for, that was the adaption project for um, Thailand. But the good thing was uh, in this project, uh, the architect uh, was a German architect and uh, he has uh, sustainability or, or German architects often or should have the sustainability in their blood because they are actually uh, trained in that way at the university. 
And um, so uh, the architect looked at the land plot, and um, it's actually located at this main street. And behind, but behind the land plot, we have a, a mountain which is covered uh, by by jungle. So the idea of the architect was to interlock nature and architecture, just like a just like a, a comp. And uh, so what the architect did was uh, to split up the the building structure in several smaller buildings. Uh, so that uh, the, the cooler air from the jungle can flow through the different uh, building parts. Then on top, uh, he designed a hovering uh, roof which provides shade and which additionally guides the air through the building. And by this, uh, we have a, a much better mi microclimate around the building. And by this, we can also save um, energy costs for, for air conditioning. On top of that, the roof is collecting uh, rainwater for irrigation. Um, and as you can see, the roof has the additional function to provide yeah, shade and a very nice um, outdoor environment uh, for people, a very nice resting area, which is also evalu evaluated in the DGNB system. We have a very good daylight situation. Usually in, in Thailand, the conference and meeting rooms are designed like this meeting room. They are completely closed. Or if there is a window, then there is the blinds down and you are feeling locked in. And after one hour, you have a headache. Now here, we have a, a meeting room and a terrace. And you can see what a beautiful view we have here, daylight. So this is very, very pleasant. We have an, air, um, an energy efficient VRF air conditioning system. We also tested the, the thermal comfort, which was pretty good, according ISO 7730. And uh, also uh, we measured the energy consumption of the building and it's about 50% less than in an average uh, Thai retail uh, building. So we have an outstanding energy performance. And for this, the building achieved the DGNB uh, gold certificate. So it was the first DGNB certified building here in Southeast Asia in Thailand. The next project was, however, much more ambitious. And that was uh, the Pruxa Plus uh, building. Pruxa is uh, the, one of the biggest real estate developers in Di Thailand, and they wanted to have one pilot project, one single family house with an outstanding sustainability. And um, for some reason, we designed that building again with another German architect who is also located here in Thailand. And uh, the first step for us was to improve the building um, um, envelope. We actually started with their normal um, uh, building design and we, we were improving their, their design. So what we have here is a very efficient external shading uh, system, not only for the, uh, for the windows, but also for the opaque walls. Uh, so we are protecting the building from the solar radiation. Then we were applying uh, thermal insulation. This is uh, glass wool covered by, uh, by aluminum foil. Uh, don't worry, it looks a little bit like a spaceship, but we were covering this with uh, gypsum board afterwards. We have a double glazing with low E coating, and even the insulation is covering the window frame to uh, reduce the thermal energy bridge uh, effect. Uh, another issue that we addressed, and I think this topic is completely unknown in Thailand, is we were improving the air tightness of the building. We want to keep the warm and humid air out of the building. So what we did is we applied compressed uh, tape between the wall and the window frame. Um, and also we put this uh, uh, yeah, air tightness tape around um, technical insu insulation, uh, technical around technical pipes which punching through the wall. And then finally we conducted a blower door test. Uh, so we produced a pressure difference between inside and outside, measured how much air is going uh, through this ventilator. And by this uh, you can determine the air leakage rate of the building. This is a European and American te technology to measure the, the leakage rate of, of the building. And uh, the nice thing is that this building would fulfill German uh, requirements. So it's a very airtight building. Now people, need fresh air, uh, and that is the reason why we installed a decentralized ventilation system with energy recovery, which provides fresh air into the building, but it has filters, so it keeps out the mosquitoes, it keeps out the dust, uh, 
and uh, it even keeps out the noise from outside. So the building is very quiet. And the ventilators itself, you hardly hear them because they are so energy efficient and, and uh, they have such a low noise emission. Uh, it's really a great, great uh, environmental yeah, comfort in, in the building. When it comes to uh, energy, of course, we wanted to offset part of the energy demand by solar photovoltaic. Now, the problem here in Thailand is we have no feed-in and tariff, and we have no net metering. And the other problem that we have with uh, residential buildings is uh, that uh, during daytime, we have almost no energy consumption because everybody is at work and the kids are at school. So nobody is at home, but we are producing a lot of solar energy. In the nighttime, it's the other way around. We have no solar energy, but everybody is home switching on the air conditioner, TV, and, and uh, lighting. So it's a really big problem. The first idea that you might have is battery, but batteries are expensive and maybe not uh, environmental friendly. So we had an innovative idea. We want to use an ice storage system. So we installed this 1,000 liter tank. And what we are doing is we are running a, a small chiller with uh, solar PV during daytime. We are producing ice. You can actually see this uh, ice layer around these pipes. And uh, in the nighttime, we are switching off the chiller because then we have no solar energy available anymore. And then we are pumping the the, the cold water from, from this ice storage uh, to the fan coils of the building. So we cannot, of course, we cannot cover the energy demand for, for lighting or for the, your TV set, but at least we can cover um, the energy consumption for air conditioning, which is the biggest part in, in a residential building. Um, as I already mentioned, DJNB requires you to design the building uh, accessible for handicapped uh, people. Um, the client, Pruxa, insisted to install this uh, stair lift. Uh, DGNB doesn't require to install a stair lift, uh, but what you have to do is you have to design the, the stair wide enough so that the stair lift fits in. The stair lift was an idea of, of, of Pruxa because they wanted to demonstrate that they are thinking about Thailand as an aging society. They wanted to, to provide a solution for that. So DGNB is really smart. You don't have to invest into expensive technology, but you have to design the building in a, in a way that you can integrate this technology later on. <clears throat> yeah, then when it comes to indoor environment comfort, um, the comfort is just great in the building uh, because the cooling load in the building is because of the insulation and the shading and the air tights. And the cooling load is so low that the air conditioner is always working on the lowest level, which means you don't hear anything from the air conditioning, you don't hear anything from the ventilation system, you don't hear anything from outside, so it's super quiet. We have a very good air quality in the building we, because we made sure that all the materials that we were using is VOC, low VOC. And in contrary to LEED, you have to prove this with a measurement. So we did a VOC measurement, which is, by the way, very expensive, um, to, to check uh, the, the air quality in the building, which was very good. You have to make sure that you have sufficient media infrastructure. Today, I looked behind my bookshelf in my, in my, uh, uh, in my uh, living room, and it's a big mess, so many cables and, and plugs I have there. So you have to think about also uh, to, to design enough uh, wall plugs uh, in your building and also waste separation, which might not be a current topic here in Thailand, but it will become one in the uh, future. And for this outstanding uh, sustainability concept, the building achieved the DGNB Platinum Certificate. So that was the first Platinum Certificate in uh, Thailand. The next project um, was less ambitious when it comes to environmental quality, um, but uh, still a very, very challenging project. It's a 15,000 square meter uh, factory for Grohe. I guess you all know Grohe, they are uh, producing water fixtures. Um, and they are located in Klang. And the problem here, or the, the challenge here, was that they only had a limited budget and a very limited timeline. So uh, we had to plan this, this factory really in a very efficient way. And one main requirement of Grohe was that they didn't want to air condition the factory. Um, but because DGNB wants uh, a good thermal comfort in, in, in the factory hall, we, we tried to design a passive, um, um, yeah, a, a pass, passive concept, concept to improve thermal comfort in the building. 
And the basic idea is, uh, was to have a reflective coating on the, on the roof of the building to ref uh, reflect the shortwave radiation from the sun from the building. In the second step, we have thermal insulation under the roof to reduce the long wave radiation uh, to the floor of, of the building. And the third step is to introduce as much airflow in the building um, as possible. And uh, the tricky thing with airflow is that it's actually a very cheap measure because you don't need any, any ventilators, but um, it's a difficult measure to calculate. And uh, therefore, we were using a sophisticated CFD simulation to uh, evaluate different design solutions in terms of uh, the size of the air in and outlets, the location of the air in and outlets. And I think we could help the, the engineers and, uh, and the architect um, um, yeah, to support the design uh, process. Also, when it comes to daylighting, uh, when it comes to daylighting, you have different contradicting uh, um, things going on. Um, uh, if, you, if you design skylights uh, with a too big area, you will introduce too much heat into the building, which leads to overheating. Um, if it's not enough, then the, the building will be very dark and you will have a very unpleasant uh, uh, work environment. And also the cost is also an issue. So you have to find a very good uh, alternative. And this is also encouraged by the DGNB system. And if you look at, this is the old factory of uh, Grohe, and you can see daylight was not really an issue when they designed it. But uh, yeah, this is the finished uh, uh, factory in, of Grohe in Klang, and you can see that we have a very nice uh, daylight situation in, in the factory. <clears throat> of course, we were also applying a photovoltaic system. I already mentioned we have no net metering, no feed-in tariff, but when it comes to factories, uh, this is not a problem in, in Thailand because uh, the main energy consumption is during daytime, so even a 1.2 megawatt photovoltaic system, you can consume all the energy within the building because you have all these processes. Um, yeah, most, most factory owners, they think about uh, the machines and the functionality, etc., but they sometimes forget to think about uh, the labor. Uh, people need to rest to work efficiently, so DGNB encourages to provide good resting areas inside the building, outside the building. So we were creating this um, outside area, which is shaded, where you have some sport facilities like table tennis, uh, you have cold water. Uh, and people really like to sit there and have their lunch outside of the factory. Yeah, for this uh, uh, sustainability concept, uh, Grohe achieved the DGNB silver certificate, and they had a huge party here uh, in Bangkok, Bangkok and also in Klang, and they were super pr proud on their sustainability uh, uh, label uh, because they are very much aware about this this topic. So uh, for them. On one hand, of course, they want to have a sustainable buildings to improve the functionality and the overall quality of the building, but they also want to have the label for marketing reasons. <clears throat> yeah, the last project that I want to present to you is the Dana Pipat building. The client is Danadak Asset Development, which is the main developer of public buildings uh, in Thailand. So they are, the main client is uh, the Thai government. And um, they wanted to erect a new uh, headquarter for themselves, and, they want, and therefore they wanted to have the most sustainable office building uh, in uh, Bangkok, and therefore they wanted to go for the DTNB certification. And again, the first thing what we did was we were improving the building envelope, the, uh, the building envelope, uh, by applying a very good thermal insulation of the building, uh, by applying external shading. We have this uh, horizontal fixed shading here, and we, have, we even have, that's also quite unique in Thailand, we have these vertical movable sh uh, shading we are, which are adjusted according to the sun. Um, we have double low E glazing and also an airtight building envelope. Um, also, when it comes to active technologies uh, within the building, of course, we were using LED lighting. Uh, we were using an uh, uh, energy-efficient ventilation system with an enthalpy wheel. 
Um, and uh, we have a PV system on the neighboring roof, which is connected to the building to cover part of the energy demand. And finally, we have an energy monitoring system to improve the, the building operation. Uh, this is very important because even though you have a great energy concept of the building, the, the, the buildings are very often operated in the wrong way. So we make now sure that the building is performing as it was designed originally. Yeah, I already talked about energy efficiency of lighting, but DGNB also requires you to look into the lighting, light quality. That it's about um, glare-free lighting, it's about the color rendering index, and therefore we decided to go with this uh, direct-indirect uh, lighting, which provides a very nice and pleasant uh, work atmosphere in, in the building. Yeah, I already mentioned um, ease of cleaning. We have an entryway system uh, so people can clean their shoes. We have a gangway between the shading system and the glazing, so you can even clean the glazing from, from outside. And uh, regarding toilets, these are hanging toilets, so it's very easy to clean under the toilet um, as well. Again, resting areas uh, is an important topic. Uh, I forgot to mention that the whole building is sitting on top of a, of a pond. And we have these gangways uh, connecting the, the building with, uh, with the, let's say, mainland. And uh, we have um, uh, a certain area where we are providing shading and this possibility to sit. There is a green wall, which is also combined with, with a resting area. And we have an air-conditioned atrium, which can, can also be used for conferences and, and uh, events. Um, yeah, when it comes to sustainability, also the design and the construction process uh, is important. So we have to um, make monthly reports, which are uh, sent to the client. Um, in regard to a sustainable construction site, we also make sure that the material that we are using are um, uh, yeah, equal to what was tendered and that they are VOC, low VOC or free of uh, VOC because also in that project we had to do this VOC measurement and luckily um, the, the result was really good so that the building in the end achieved the DGNB Platinum uh, certificate. Yeah, um, so these are the four buildings that we have uh, implemented so far in Thailand, and I hope it will be, become more. There are another two projects which are in the construction uh, process currently. Uh, one is the new Harn uh, office uh, building. Um, this will be, I think, a very nice pilot project because it's quite close to the city center of Bangkok. So I think uh, it will be easy uh, to visit. And also the architect has sustainability in, it, in, in his blood and uh, the building was designed right from the beginning in, in the right way. Another interesting project is the extension of the Hefele Logistics Center. So this part of the logistic center is already existing and then we have another 10,000 square meter and an additional office building in the background. This is, um, well, a nice project actually because this is the second uh, building of Hefele, so it seems that they were quite satisfied with the DGNB certification of their first project. Now, I was talking a lot of about uh, buildings. Uh, many buildings is a city, so now I would like to continue with the DGNB system for sustainable um, cities. Now I have to move behind my laptop because this uh, part of the uh, presentation is not so familiar for me. Anyway, um, the DGMB is providing several uh, certification schemes for different city types. Um, so we have a certification system for urban districts, for business districts, industrial sites, event areas, resource, and uh, vertical cities. I think, especially for Thailand, it might be interesting uh, the industrial sites because we know that there are many of these sites under development in Chonburi and in uh, Rayong, also when it comes to the e Eastern Economic uh, Corridor. Uh, vertical cities is also an interesting topic, uh, obviously, for Bangkok because we have all these high-rise buildings here. The good thing is uh, that the um, certification of districts is actually applying, applying exactly the same principles as for the building. So again, we have the three main pillars of uh, sustainability, and then we have these other 
uh, topics which are addressing all three main pillars. Um, we have uh, criteria behind it, them. Some are uh, different from the buildings. I would like to point out some of them. For example, when it comes to environmental um, quality of the buildings, uh, of the cities, biodiversity is a topic. When it comes to economy, the land use efficiency um, is a topic. So DGNB encourages to, to improve the efficiency, to reduce the circulation area uh, for the infrastructure. Um, open spaces is obviously a, a topic to improve the thermal comfort outside of, of the buildings. Um, mo mobility infrastructure, uh, when it comes to motorized transportation, pedestrians, this is a topic which is varying from, from the building certification system and uh, governance um, when it comes to building sites. When it comes to the certification of, of cities and districts, DGNB um, is actually ignoring what's happening with the buildings. It's only focusing around the buildings. So it's about the, the circulation area, the, the streets. It's about public open spaces. And it's about uh, the infrastructure uh, which supplies uh, the city. Because usually, as a municipality, for example, you have no, no influence what's happening within the buildings. Of course, you can give them certain requirements in, in regard to, to energy demand or maybe environmental um, uh, performance, but usually this is not uh, possible. Another speciality when it comes to cities is that um, it's a very dynamic uh, um, process. So in, in buildings, we have a limited time frame. A building project might uh, need one year, two years, or three years uh, for implementation. But it, when it comes to city districts, we are talking about many years. And that's the reason why we have a three-step approach to the certification of city districts. You can apply for a pre-certificate, and in this case, only a planning urban design concept is required, and you can use this um, pre um, this pre certificate for marketing. In the second step, this is already a certificate, but this is only valid for five years. You need to erect 25% of the infrastructure, and then finally, uh, if 75% of the building construction is finished, then you get uh, an unlimited uh, DGNB certificate. So you, we have this three-step approach. DGNB has uh, developed a master tool based on Excel uh, to make the certification easy. Uh, and with this master tool, you can cover up to 30% of the total evaluation of the building. You have to mainly input uh, the areas and the type of areas in, into the master tool. And behind this master pool, there is a database with all kind of life cycle assessment data, costs and uh, bio indices for different uh, areas. And then automatically around 30% of the total certification is calculated by this, um, by this uh, Excel tool. Um, I want to point out some of the uh, main, cr uh, some of the criteria or city uh, specific criteria, so the biodiversity of the city is evaluated for certain areas. So, for, exa for example, you get different evaluation points uh, depending if it's a natural meadow, if it's a park, or if it's a circulation area to enc encourage um, yeah, natural habitats within the city. Um, DGNB is also requiring a life cycle cost analysis um, of, of the city districts. So um, it might be more cost efficient to invest in the beginning of the project a little bit more and then save costs in the long run, long run instead of uh, investing only a little money and then paying a lot of money uh, in the future. A very important issue is thermal comfort in the open space. It's a huge difference if you are walking in the Lumpini Park under the trees with a nice breeze, uh, or if you are uh, walking through Sukhumvit Road where it's hit, uh, really hot, where the airflow is blocked from the BTS line, where you have a lot of solar radiation, uh, which is also reflected from the asphalt. So um, DGNB encourages you to provide shading, to, pro to introduce as much air as possible. Also, water features are helping to reduce the uh, temperature. 
Enough of the theory. Again, I would like to show you some implemented uh, projects. DGNB has been quite successful uh, with the city district uh, certification system. A total of 57 projects have been uh, certified, which makes uh, DGNB the market leader in Europe and the second uh, in the world. And uh, I would like to start with the first project that ha that they have uh, certified so certified so far, which is the. Nordhafen in Copenhagen. It's actually a huge um, uh, development and that was a pilot project for DGNB. Uh, the total area of the project is 1875 Lai <coughs> and the, the project is actually not built on land but in the sea so they had, had to fill up the sea by uh, excavated material from the new uh, metro line and this blue part is already finished of the project and uh, for the next phase um, the, the, the government has decided to certify all buildings in the district according to DGNB. So the, the people in, in Denmark are really quite convinced about the DGNB system. Uh, another interesting project is the Maida Eco City in uh, Mongolia. Um, the project is uh, located south of Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. Uh, it was originally planned as a tourism project because um, they have in, uh, erected here the biggest uh, Buddha uh, statue. I don't know if it's in the world, but it seems to be really huge because it's bigger than the Statue of Liberty in uh, New York. And the idea was to have hotels and restaurants around it, uh, but uh, then they decided to, to develop this to a complete um, city. However, the implementation of this project is um, quite unsure. Uh, we have to see if this will come. Anyway, they achieved a pre-certificate for the urban design of, of this uh, project. Yeah, another project is um, the Berlin uh, Tegel, the urban Tech Republic project, Campus West. Um, this is actually, at the moment, it's still an airport. This is the terminal building and the runway is here. And the idea is that uh, currently there's a new uh, airport under construction in, in Berlin, but the construction is delayed. And after finalizing of this construction, um, they want to stop the operation of the airport in Berlin Tegel and convert it into a smart city. And um, so what they are planning to do is that uh, that um, uh, university is moving into the terminal uh, building and surrounding this terminal buildings there will be startup companies and the idea is to uh, rent out uh, complete several streets to companies so they can try out new technologies like for example all autonomous um, traffic or uh, new waste concepts so this is a truly smart and innovative uh, project um, another project and this was certified according to the uh, system for vertical cities actually the system vertical for vertical cities uh, was uh, developed on the example of that project because um, the project itself is actually these four towers located in Frankfurt. Uh, the architecture was designed by UN Studio and the project developer approached DGNB to support the sustainable design of, of this landmark project. Um, the buildings are uh, mixed-use high-rise buildings with shopping, hotel, luxu luxury, luxury residential and 10% of them is uh, affordable residential. That's a requirement by the municipality. And the problem with the certification of that project is that the certification systems for buildings is actually not really appropriate because uh, there are more than 5,000 people working in these towers and Topics like, for example, the connection to the traffic is a, is a big issue, and this is not uh, really well um, addressed in the in the building certification system. But of course, it's also not a city uh, city district. So what they did is they merged the the district certification system with the building certification uh, system to 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 get um, a sustainable uh, solution. Yeah. 
Also a new certification system for DGNB is the system for uh, event uh, areas. Uh, this is the new stadium for FC uh, Barcelona. I'm not a football fan, but I guess the people, <laughs> yeah, you know it. Um, they wanted to develop, to develop a new uh, football stadium. And uh, actually at this location, there is already the old uh, stadium and they were considering to move out to the, to the uh, outside the city. But actually in the end, they decided to stay at, the, at their current location. Um, first, of course, to reduce the, 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 the traffic in Barcelona and also to save material. So that was already a, a, a sustainable approach to do that. Then, so this stadium um, is all the, already the refurbished stadium. Then we have additionally some hotels, restaurants here. And this is a, additionally a, a basketball uh, arena. And uh, one of the main topics was the integration of the event area into the urban surroundings. Um, and for this, the DGMB developed a new certification system for event areas based on city districts, and it's defined by its temporary uh, use. So this system is uh, mainly focusing on concert halls, for example, or other uh, event locations. Um, the difficulties uh, here in that project was the application of the life cycle assessment because, of course, there are no benchmarks available and the thermal comfort because it's an open arena, so you cannot really air conditioning. Other challenges are the security concept and the waste concept uh, from packaging for such an event location. Um, and another interesting project is uh, the Volkswagen engine plant in Chemnitz in the eastern part of uh, Germany. Um, actually, Volkswagen was approaching DGNB to develop a certification system for their industrial locations. So this is not for industrial buildings, but for the whole uh, location because they wanted to apply the system worldwide in their factories. And um, so they have this developed this uh, certification system and the main focus here is of course energy efficiency in the production um, and also um, since the location is very close to the city center this is an additional um, challenge to to connect the, the factory in a good way to the to the city they were applying rain wa rainwater collection uh, for the production and of, on top of the rainwater tank, they were uh, implementing um, a park which is open to the public. And the final city project that I would like to uh, present to you is the Sino German Eco Park in Qingdao in China. Uh, the master plan was designed by GMP. It's a mixed use um, um, city district. And actually only this bubble, they call this bubble, is certified according to the DGNB uh, system. And um, the, also they had to, to adapt the, the DGNB system for cities to the requirements in, in China. And I think, yeah, this is a great example for me. Uh, this is actually, for me, the next steps after the certification of six buildings. I would really love to, to certify a city district or maybe an industrial location. And uh, I think in summer we will start a research pro uh, project about that topic. So I hope that we can soon adapt the DGNB systems for cities also to Thailand and then finally have a certified project here. Okay, I would like to come to the last uh, main point, point for the, today, the system comparison and costs. I uh, already mentioned a couple of times that, uh, of course, there are more, uh, the more uh, certification systems available here in Thailand. And the main players at the moment, moment are four certification systems. One is the TREES uh, certification system, which is uh, like a localized version of DGNB. And this system is mainly focusing on Thai uh, clients. And then we have three uh, international certification system. One is the LEED system. This is the most famous uh, and also one of the oldest certification systems. And they have already cer certified 200 buildings here uh, in Thailand. Then the new kit on the block is uh, the well certification system. Uh, there are zero uh, finished buildings at the moment, but I know that there are at least four projects 
uh, under development at the moment. And then we have the DTNB system with four finished buildings, two in the certification at the moment. And uh, I would like to compare the three international system. I will skip the, 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 the trees system because I don't know it uh, well enough because I can't read Thai language. It's only available in Thai language. Um, so I would like to compare the, the, the three international uh, systems. And this comparison actu actually bases on a research uh, uh, project which was initiated in, in Germany to, to compare the uh, different systems. And I would like to first focus on DGNB and LEED. And um, the assessment of the th different systems was done uh, according to the main topics of DGNB, ecology, economy, social cultural, technical quality, process, and site quality. And you can see that DGNB has more, has higher requirements than the LEED system with the exception of ecology. I think it's because of the water um, water demand uh, de uh, lead is really strict when it comes to the water consumption, but in all the other uh, sis, uh, in all the other criteria, DGNB is superior, especially when it comes to the economy, because DGNB has this life cycle cost approach. Now, when it comes to well, this is a special case because well is uh, only focusing on health and well-being in buildings, which is absolutely a very important issue. Um, I think this is a great idea to cover, cover this topic. But I was analyzing the system and um, it came to my mind that a lot of the criteria are relating to the operation of buildings. So it's about food, it's about exercise, sleep policy, things like that. And actually I consider myself as an engineer, as a building designer, and uh, I have nothing to do with the operation uh, of the building. So I'm wondering sometimes a little bit how does that fit to the building certification. Uh, it's getting even more interesting if we are comparing the certification costs of the different systems. Now this is an example, this is a real example from our company uh, because we can actually cover with our partner com company, Africus, we can cover all certification systems, trees, lead, well, and DGNB. And we had to propose to a pro project with 35,000 uh, square meter. And we calculated the consulting costs, the registration costs, and the certification costs. And you can see that DGNB is slightly more expensive than LEED, but on a very sil similar level, I would say. Uh, but when it comes to well uh, certification, I was really, I, I first thought that there's a calculation error because the certification fee is super, super high. It's, uh, I don't know, four times, five times higher than for LEED and, and DGNB. And there's also a reason behind that. The reason is that well is actually traveling to, the, to Thailand and doing a lot of consulting and also they do a lot of measuring, which could also be done by the consultant. So I must say I feel a little bit, um, as a consultant, I feel a little bit pissed, I must say, because more or less they are taking away work from, from consultants. And um, I don't know if this is a very good way. And of course, it's not covering all the green issues. So I don't understand why, why well is separating um, green topics, uh, economic topics, from the well-being of, of people. And so a lot of the projects here in Thailand, they do now double certification. So they combine the well certification with LEED. And if you then add up the certification costs, uh, it's getting really expensive. Yeah, I'm wondering if that is the future or if it would be a better idea to invest that money in, into, into other things. Another topic is not only the certification costs, it's also about investment costs. So there has been a research uh, in Germany because uh, many clients think, uh, oh, if I certify my building, I have a loss uh, to invest into fancy um, green technology and that, that will make my building much more expensive. But this um, diagram actually shows that the certification level is quite independent, fr independent from the building costs. So you can achieve a DGNB gold buildings for a low price or you can have it for a high price. So it's not really depending on the certification level but on other things like architecture, for example. Yeah, that was already more or less the end of my presentation. I would like to give you um, a conclusion. 
DGNB is a sustainable building certification system which covers all aspects of sustainability, environmental, economy, social, cultural quality. Um, it's performance and life cycle based. Um, the system can be adapted internationally. Um, in Thailand, we have implemented already five projects and two other projects are in the process. Um, yeah, the DTNB system for distri districts uh, follows generally the same approach uh, like the one for buildings. And uh, 57 projects have been already certified, but unfortunately not in Thailand. Um, and the certification and consulting fee for DGNB projects are similar for LEED and significantly lower than uh, for WELL. Um, if you are interested in that uh, topic, in the general topic of, of sustainability uh, and also about the DGNB, there is an event uh, coming up uh, on 5th of June. It's the International Conference Connecting Asian Smart Cities, Grids and e Mobility. I will be uh, chairman of the session for sustainable buildings and there will be one presentation by the CEO of the DGNB. He will fly from Germany and will present, present about the DGNB system. However, the other speakers are also super interesting. One is uh, Dr. Singh of the Risk Center. He will talk about sustainable uh, materials. Then uh, we have a colleague from my company, uh, Kuhn Bell. She will talk about her experience with uh, energy audits and commissioning of uh, high-rise buildings in Thailand or in Bangkok. And then uh, this is also a very interesting um, presentation. Uh, Christian Pluskwa, who is from Germany but who lives in Singapore, he has implemented many projects with uh, radiant cooling, which is a very innovative cooling uh, technology, which is completely unknown in, in Thailand, which I would also apply in buildings here, which could apply, uh, which could solve the thermal comfort problem in uh, office buildings. Okay, I'm really surprised to, that, to see that you are all still here. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Maybe you still have some questions or I think I was even a, also a bit faster than one and a half hours. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the question was how to measure social cultural uh, aspects in the DGNB certification system. Um, maybe I go back to the slide with the different criteria behind that topic. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh -huh. Here it is. Okay, let me see. So, yeah, one is thermal comfort. Um, you can uh, simulate the thermal comfort of the building according ISO 7730, um, the operative temperature. Um, you can design the indoor uh, air quality. Um, so you, that's basically about the airflow which the ventilation system is providing to the building. So you have to stay within certain limits. You have to provide enough fresh air into the building. Acoustic comfort, this is about um, the reverberation time in buildings. Do you have enough uh, noise cancelling material uh, in, the, in the ceiling, for example? Um, this can also be calculated and also be measured. Um, user control, this is about uh, how much influence people have on their, in their uh, workplace. For example, can I switch, can I control um, the, the light, can I control the temperature, can I control the, the, the blinds. Um, what else? Quality of indoor and outdoor spaces, that's a qu actually this I showed, is there enough resting areas inside and outside uh, of the building? And then DTNB actually ca counts how many, um, how to say, 
features are in the resting area. So for example, is there a seat? Is there a table? Is there water? Is there electricity so I can connect my mobile phone? Is there shade? Um, stuff like that. Then safety security. This is about um, how easy it is uh, or how much security features are there. Are there CCTV cameras? Are there enough smoke detectors? Stuff like that. And design for all is uh, you have to fulfill the Thai requirements according handicapped uh, accessibility for, for buildings. So these are the objective uh, criteria to, to evaluate social cultural quality. Everything clear? <laughs> Is somebody of you a lead AP or are there any lead consultants here? <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> um, maybe I, I will have a question uh, to you, uh, Thomas. Um, yeah. Um, Thomas is from Germany, but he lives a long, since a long time in China. He's an architect. I know that DGNB is very active in China. How well received or how well known is DGNB? What is the role of, of LEED? And I heard that WELL is very uh, successful also in, in Shanghai. So what, what is the situation there? The three star system. Three star system. And um, many know lead, of course, and uh, because Chinese are orientated towards the US. Mm -hmm. And well came up now, and uh, but well is um, not so important at the moment, I would say. Mm -hmm. But in general, the um, Chinese people are now asking. Um, how could I live more healthy? How could I work more healthy? So uh, after developing 30 or 40 years very quick, uh, the focus has shifted now a little bit on well-being. But um, it is not um, something important uh, for developers to implement it into a building, I would say, at the moment. Um, because um, the country is still developing very well, and uh, developers can sell what they build. And um, clients are not asking too much for this now, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. It uh, will be the future, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, it's, it's, actually it's actually quite, quite interesting, interesting because I know from DGNB in China is that they have now a cooperation agreement with the local certification system, with the three-star system. And the idea is that you can easily do double certification. So you can use the criteria of the three-star system in DGNB and vice versa. Actually, DGNB is very open for other systems. They are not very they are not narrow-minded and open to discussion. And actually, we try to approach the TGBI, the, the Thai Green Building Institute, uh, and also to have this kind of double certification. But they are not very, yeah, they are a little bit not so open-minded. Well, well argues that, um, I don't know the percentage, but 30% or more of the things you have to do are included in LEED already. So they work together. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the whole system I mean, no, I, I fully appreciate that the, the 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 tree system. I think it's a, it's a great thing because it's it's easy to it's it's in Thai language, so it's easy to understand by the developer and uh, and the uh, companies. So I, I I really like the idea of the, of these local uh, systems, and it would be really nice to to cooperate with with them. You want them? Okay. Uh, I would like to ask about NY uh, criteria NY 1.1 and 1.3. Uh, that, that building should 
uh, must to assess life cycle assessment, right? Mm. And and please please explain about uh, NY one point three. Okay, um, one point one. This is uh, the life cycle assessment. So basically, what you have to do is you have to make um, an energy calculation of the future energy demand of the building. As I already said, DGNB is open-minded, so they are accepting the Thai building energy code calculation. You know, there's a, a, a Thai building energy code, and you can use this calculation result for the life cycle assessment. And then you have to use this energy demand in combination with a database, and you have to input the complete building. Basically, you have to use the BOQ, the, the bill of quantities of the building, and input in, into a database. And this database is calculating the environmental impact of the building uh, on with like five in indicators. One is global warming potential, then we have acidification potential, eutrophication potential. It's quite, it's a very scientific um, um, approach, um, but it's uh, not so difficult because uh, they're providing all these software tools uh, so you can calculate that. And ENV 1.3, that is sustainable resource extraction. These are two main points. Um, one is about uh, sustainable wood. That is that is kind of a problem in Thailand. So uh, DGNB um, um, supports you if to to use wood from sustainable forestry. So you, you need to provide the FSC label. It's uh, called forestry. I don't know. It, it's, it comes from sustainable uh, forestry. So they they want to make sure that you don't cut down the jungle, and then go move on and. You destroy the, the, the environment, but they want to have a sustainable forestry. And the other topic is um, that the stones, if you use natural stones in your building, you have to make sure that it's not coming from child labor. So men, some countries in, in the world, they, they extract uh, natural stones by using children, and DGNB wants to avoid that. And the good thing here in Thailand is that the government has forbid child labor. Uh, so um, if we are using natural stones here in Thailand, it's enough that, uh, that the contract, if the contract is providing us a letter, that the stone is coming from Thailand and then we know it's without child labor, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, good question. Any other questions? Um, yes and no. Um, it's, I think it's uh, totally legitimate to use it as a marketing tool. And also, I mean, that was made, basically it was one of the ideas to have the certification system to encourage developer, because the problem is a developer, he wants to build the building as cheap as possible and sell it as expensive as possible. That's the whole idea. And uh, he doesn't care about the quality, if it's a bad developer. I, I think there are very good ones. And um, uh, so a certification system is a third party which will look on the actual quality of, of the building and then give the, the developer this label. And um, the, the nice thing here in, in, in Bangkok is actually, meanwhile, that the, the high-rise buildings, almost all new high-rise building developments have a, a LEED certification. And, and this is really great. Actually, you, I have the feeling that the developer, they cannot sell a, a high-rise building anymore uh, without a certification because all, all other have it. So you, you need to have at least LEED gold. And I think this is a, is a, is a good... Uh, thing. Um, as a consultant, I, I really like the certification to force the designer, to force the client, to force the, the, the uh, contractor 
to, to build the building in a, in a sustainable way because I can always tell them, okay, if you don't do this and that, you will lose the certificate. And otherwise it will be more difficult. I have currently, I have another, or actually it will be hopefully a future project. Uh, it's a small factory uh, in, in Rayong and this, and uh, it's, a, it's a German factory owner and, and it's a new building. And I suggested to him, okay, we can do a certification and the certification means that you will, should have a photovoltaic system and you should have external shading and you need good resting areas. You need to have a good thermal comfort in your factory and you need healthy materials and then you will get the certification. And he said, wow, I like all the, your ideas. I like the PV system, the, the thermal comfort, the fresh air and the healthy material. I like everything, but I don't need a certificate. I was like, woo, okay. So this is the other way around, you know. And then, and, and I told him, that's okay with me. I mean, I like it. If your building is sustainable in the end, I don't, I don't need a certificate. If you don't need it, then we don't need it. And then I, I use actually the certification system, the DTNB system, as a manual to check uh, what we want to implement in the building. And why not? Why not? Uh, not for, uh, for new. If, if you certify your new building, it's it's over. It's done. Then it's finished. Um, with uh, no, that's that's it. Yeah. You you don't have to recertify. So maybe another question to, to the audience. Who, who has heard about DGNB before? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do more marketing. <laughs> yeah. One mic. Um, so the question is, how do I see sustainability in the future? And I actually see it um, as DGNB is seeing it. Uh, DGNB has a new slogan, which is co uh, called uh, sustainability is the new normal. So that's already the answer. I think uh, in future, every building should be sustainable. It doesn't mean every building has to be certified but every building should be sustainable because we as human beings, we stay, I don't know, 80% of the time in, in buildings, at work and at home. And basically it's, it's our environment. So we, we should dis design it as pleasant as, as possible and as nice and healthy as possible. spoken at the moment I don't know it I, I would need to to look into into the manual but maybe you have if you have your name card here uh, I can take a look I, I can send you it's so much you know I can I can't know everything I <laughs> know ah, no now I remember I think yeah okay um, this is about um, yeah um, you if you that you should do um, a market research um, of of the build um, before you start the building project. Uh, so the question is, how, um, what is the uh, economic success of the building? And so you you have to to look 
how the building fits into the urban context. Con context. So for example, I live close to Icon Siam. Do you, do you know that new shopping mall? Do you know it? So it's like a, it's a super luxury shopping mall, but it's like surrounded by, <laughs> by low class buildings. And actually this shopping mall is on, only focused on, uh, I would say, uh, rich Chinese and Singaporean tourists. But it has nothing to do with the surrounding, so the, the marketability of, of the building, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's about basically how, how easy it is to market the, the building in, in, the, in the urban context. Um, actually, not GNB is getting this. Uh, you have to basically contract, uh, for example, an urban planner or an architect to do a market study on, on the building. Does it make sense to have the building on that land plot? So, for example, if you, if you build a new shopping mall, you have to check, uh, does it make, do you have customers around the building and is there enough infrastructure to get people to the building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is like a market study which has to be done by a local consultant. This is not done by DGNB. DGNB only looks, okay, you have, you have done such a market research uh, and it's not evaluating, uh, well, it's also evaluating how, how promising the marketability of the building is, but it's not carrying out the actual research. They don't do that. Yeah, welcome. That was a difficult question. So, okay, if there are no further questions, uh, thank you very much again. Uh, I open spoken when I arrived here, I thought that the evening will be a disaster, but you proved me to be wrong. Uh, actually, it was a very nice uh, event. I was really surprised that you all stayed such a, for such a long time, and then even we had a very interesting discussion, interesting questions. Thank you very much. Um, actually, I forgot to bring some DGNB brochures, so uh, maybe uh, I think you, you already put down your, you wrote down your, your email address, so maybe I will uh, supply information to you in the next days. And uh, if you have any further questions, you can also approach me. I can give you my name card, and then we can keep in touch. Okay? Thank you very much. Kopf und Kopf. Yeah.